Hello, I'm Lady Calmere. Welcome to my channel. This will be my 97th video. And it will be on a presentation on the sun goddess Soleil. Sol in, in, in Latvia. So she's a Lithuanian and Latvian goddess. She is a sun goddess no it's not un rare for a god for the sun to be feminine nor is it rare to be for a, a god to be a moon god so there are sun goddesses and there are solar goddesses as well as there are moon gods and lunar gods so soleil I'll be using her Lithuanian pronunciation, is the most powerful goddess in that pantheon when it comes to the feminine goddesses. She is a mother, and in, the, in this pantheon, all planets are feminine. They're all female. Now, the masculine heavenly body in this pantheon is the moon. The moon is male. The sun is female. Soleil is a very, very important, prominent goddess. So the uh, pagan reconstruction, this religion that is and has been taking off and is growing stronger and stronger is called Ramuva. It's a reconstructionist religion, mm -hmm. what I understand. And Lithuania was the final uh, place in Europe, Europe to be Christianized. They resisted. Yay! And in fact, it wasn't until 15, was 1553 till the king of that area became Christianized. And actually upon his death, people went back to their pagan roots. And of course, you know, the Christians called in to, to the Teutonic Christian Knights to bring back Christianity. And Christianity was brought to Lithuania. They tried to Christianize them, but when they resisted, and they were actually called the resistors, they were the resistance, the final resistance. You know, Christianity was bought by the church actually by the uh, Catholic and then later Protestant church, but it was brought in through the usual methods, war, death, torture, rape, uh, punishments, killing, destruction, looting and pillaging, propaganda, brainwashing, until the people uh, relented. and But there were those who kept their pagan roots alive. And even when they were going to church, they still worshiped their own gods. And there were still traditions still held that were very pagan, even into the later years of Christianity, when it has finally, finally taken root. So now people are going back to the pagan roots. Yay! Remova! So, Soleil, she has many children. Her husband was the moon, and in which uh, they do divorce because of his actions. 
and I'll get into that, the moon. Menua, also called Menes. So her children, the okay, so uh, her most famous, her, her oldest child is Zem, Zemina, the earth. It's all, she's also called Mara, which the Christians pretty much try to say, oh, Mara is Mary. See, they sound alike. And they say, oh, you see, it's really Mary. It's really the Virgin Mary. Okay. <laughs> so, and in fact, the earth is actually has another name. And in Lithuania is Pasulis. And in Latvian, it's Pasule, Pasule, which actually translate the place under Sole. Now, what does the name Sole mean? Sole means the sun. So we have her also her favorite child, Osrinje, which this is Venus as the morning star. And then you have Venus as the evening star, Wakarina. So then you have Mars. The planet Mars is actually female, is her daughter Zazdra. Indraja is Jupiter, it's just female, another daughter. Her other daughter is Selija, Saturn. And Mercury, Vivora. Vivora, Mercury. So these planetary bodies are her daughters. Soleil. Also has her waxing and waning. And that goes with the seasons. Her two main festivals, her big days, or with the fe feast of Kaleda, is the winter solstice. And you gotta understand, in even now in this area, it's a flat land. It's it's a lot of it's very flat. That's why it gets like murky or very boggy. And in the winter solstice, it's, it's the, the sun seems to be like weak because it's very dreary and dark. And this is a time of renewal and change. If that's what the feast was. And the summer solstice was when it's a happy time. Because now it's warm and it's a very fortuitous day, which is celebrated on June 24th. And this is when the sun is bright and very life-giving, where it chases away all the dark, the, the, the darkness and uh, the cold. So this is a land quite far north. The the Baltic regions is very far, far north. In fact, they have uh, four seasons. In autumn, it's very rainy. It's during the autumn times. It's it's like the monsoon season, I guess. It's not called monsoon, but it's it rains a lot. So and you have spring, summer and winter. So Ligo, as it's called, is the feast. It, it, deal, it means to sway or to swing, and that's what people do. And it's a very bright, neighborly, uh, fest, festive time. It's a time of songs and celebrations. So when she is waning 
It is said that Soleil's chariot is only pulled by two horses, that she has one chariot pulled by two horses. Now, when it's waxing, she has about, it's like just huge big chariots, like nine of them, pulled by 100 horses. Her chariot, the, the wheels are copper. And her horses never sweat, need to rest when during the day. They do not tire, nor do they sweat. They continue, they, they ride continuously. They said that she holds a, like a, a pot or a vase where she pours golden light out to all for sea. And when she comes by, she is the one that chases the clouds away. She chases its weariness to other lands. She, she, her light nips the tops of the trees as that she nicks it and to get it out of her way. Now, let me show you of these artists. First off, we got this beautiful piece of works, Soleil. I recommend this book. The art is beautiful. Celestial Goddesses, Lisa Hunt. And in fact, I didn't know who Soleil was until I actually got this book. And I start, you know, doing research and meditating on her. And I'm going to tell you why I have this amber. In a minute but i want to get this out of the way before i forget so lisa hunt does beautiful artwork and i'm only going to show this page but absolutely beautiful look her up we got this card the sun this is the toth deck by alistair crowley good old uncle al and this is the Sun card by Morgan Greer Tarot. You can get these wonderful, wonderful book and tarot cards at eBay or Amazon or your local Pagans or New Age star. Now, Amber, why do I have Amber? Amber is said to be the tears of Soleil. When she cries, she cries Amber. So I have this beautiful piece of amber, it's a pound. This is actually Indonesian amber. This is golden yellow, but also has some tints of blue inside. Very beautiful. I keep this by me all the time. My man will tell you I keep it on the couch for now and it's been sitting with me on the couch and I got this. And we have this, some wonderful pieces of amber, which is a sacred stone to her. So Soleil, a very sad story, what happened to her daughter, Osrina. Osrine, Osrine, sorry, Osrine, Osrine. So Osrine is very beautiful. And Menes. Menes desired her. And one day, Soleil was looking for her daughter after her, you know, her daily trip across the sky. And she found the young lady. And she looked sad and withdrawn and distraught. And she had her fingers in the pond, just waiting it. And she asked her, what's wrong? And the daughter just shrugged and said, with tears in her eye, I lost my ring. Later, it, she admits that Menes raped her. And Soleil, being the good mother she is, she wasn't going to stay with Menes 
anymore. She's tired with this shit, but this, this took the cake. It is said she took her sword and slashed him across his face, leaving the scars we see today. And she banished him from her home, kicked him out. And that's why the sun and moon are now separated. And it says that's the reason why evil was able to, or negativity was able to seep into our world today when this happened. Now, they are seeing if there's, he's allowed, he comes once in a while to see his children. And in which, by the way, their, her home is in the west. And it's a silver castle with a silver gate. So he comes by once in a while to visit or sometimes even flirt with his daughters. But it's not a lot. So the moon god also has a chariot where he travels across the sky. But even before, before he did this to Os, Oshrine, he was very fickle and changeable and egotistical and even stories to the point where he became lazy he only took the moon he only rode once in a while leaving uh the world to darkness so he didn't ride like soleil does every day he rides once in a while when he feels like when it in the stories it says when he felt like it so Soleil's strength waxes and wanes during the seasons, but also she waxes and wanes during the day. So at night, she's gone. And as the days grow shorter in winter, she weakens. And as she grows longer, she gets stronger. Now, some say it was Parkunas, the Lord of Thunder, and lightning, the great god who is in the sky, damaged Menespe. Some say it's Soleil and Perkunas that did it at the same time. But many stories point to Soleil defacing her husband, now ex-husband's face forever. Soleil... As we see right there, she becomes angry and she will defend her daughter as every mother should do to defend their children against anyone who defiles them. Soleil is a goddess who loves humanity. The great, now the great God, D-I-E-V-A-S, Davis, Davis, it said that he created humanity with his spittle. But that's another story. But Soleil loves us. Now. Menulis or Menace doesn't really dare to show his face too much around her. Because she, she, she protects her children. And now she keeps up a watchful eye around him. It is say that Osherina, Osh, Osh, Oshrine, sorry, Oshrine, is the one to wake up her mother and to light the fire, you know, fight the fires for her mother. It's for her to get up in the morning. And Rakarina, Wakarina greets her mother in the evening. So Oshrine is uh, also called Soleil, M-E-I-T-S, Metis, the little, like the, sort of like a little son. So Soleil now takes up with Calvis. Sometimes she associates with Calvis and he is, he is the, uh, the smith god and in fact it is said that calvis 
created the sun and the moon. With his hammer and anvil, he's the great blacksmith of the gods. And it's also said that Soleil also takes up with Parkunas, as well as the great god Davis, who was never created, who has just been around. He's a great sky god. He's, uh, he sometimes comes around on earth as dressed as an old man to see if people still hold to traditions and, but he's not as involved as the other gods and goddesses are. Now, Soleil is very responsible. She's very dutiful. She's a good mother. She's a very approachable goddess. She's fair and she's benevolent. When she comes, evil spirits flee from her presence like cockroaches scattering a running from when you turn on the light. They flee from her like roaches. So it is says that it's very fortuitous to go out in the day, that you are protected by Soleil, you have protection against evil spirits more so than you would at night. And in fact, Soleil is said to take the dead with her when she leaves for the evening to the land of the dead. It says that she also goes to the land of the dead. And she takes them to her, she takes them towards the, her apple tree. And her apple tree has apples, fruits that are made of gold. There's apples of gold, apples of silver, and apples made of diamonds on this tree. So it was very important that people who died should be buried before should have their funeral before the sun sets. That was very important. Before the sun sets. So if they died at night, they would be buried the next day. And she would take the souls of the dead with her. So we see her importance in life and in death. She is a goddess of life. She deals with life, but she takes care. She takes the souls of the dead with her. She she loves us even in death. Now, there are Zaltis, which are very sacred to her. These are harmless non-venomous green snakes. It is said that in ancient pagan times and those who worship her, if they see a green snake, it was not to be left there. It was supposed to be buried. Treat it with respect. In fact, Christian monks were very displeased by this because People would keep these Zaltis in their home because Zaltis, the Zaltis, the green snakes, were considered a sacred to Soleil and were considered to bring good luck and fortune and happiness to a home. And that to kill one is bad luck, bad, bad, bad mojo. And was Soleil would get angered and she would punish the wrongdoer. So, of course, you know what the Christians did? Let's kill the green snakes. It's the devil. See, they worship the devil. And they may, they would kill the Zaltis. They were very sickened by the pagans because they said not only they the adultery, but they're also worshiping the uh, natural phenomena. They would, you know, they, they would had sacred groves, sacred sites, which now the Remova, the people of Remova, the, 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 pagan religion there and which is growing now have sacred groves and sacred sites yay so 
So another sacred thing to Soleil is honey. It was considered the liquid sun. And because of its color and it was sweet and it's considered it's considered uh, very solar. Her horses were called the Asvinii. Soleil was was seen as a, a, a beautiful, light-skinned woman with long, golden hair. She uh, is basically a beauty queen. During Lego, she likes to wear her, she loves her silver shoes and she is said to dance on a mountain wearing red flowers in her hair. Now, Soleil's animals that are associated with her is a swan because she rides sometimes said to ride a swan at the at night when the land of the dead where she she gets to a takes a boat and but swans definitely zaltis any green snakes green snakes grass snakes as well as horses and uh in some instances where i read bees are sacred to her. Her, her, her attributes are Soleil likes to play the cankles. It's a tradition, which is a traditional, uh, it's a traditional instrument in the Baltic instrument akin to the zither. So it's but it's very sacred now. It's just typically considered a music, a regular musical instrument. But that is sacred to her. The red apple, daisies, definitely sunflowers, amber. Her metal is gold, and even silver, but definitely gold. Her time is day, of course, planet, uh, sun. <laughs> she is a goddess of life and light. Now, when the sun set, typical, some, some types of work had to be stopped, like spinning. Because there are different reasons. Because without her guardianship, this is inviting trouble. So, without being on her watchful eye. So, a soleil is also said to use an amber spindle. Diamonds are also associated with her, as she has gold, apples of gold, silver, and diamonds. Roses are also her flowers. Now, during the day, it is said that a white cow or a white nanny goat is associated with her when she rises. And as she sets a black nanny goat and a black cow is associated with her. She is a god a goddess of fire. So that is her element. So she also has the apple tree, the linden tree, as her trees. Oh, and by the way, the cankles, 
was an instrument that would chase away evil and protect against evil spirits. It was also played during funerals and and pagan weddings. Soleil loves everyone, but she especially loves orphans, the unfortunate people, and single mothers. It is said when you prayers and petitions and calling out to Soleil, you should wear nothing on your head. Your head, your hair should be uncovered. You can wear a wreath of flowers, of course, or leaves, but nothing should like a scarf or a hat or a hood or a hoodie should be on your head. It should be free. So calling to her means not wearing anything on your head. Now, Soleil, there's so many, it's called Dinas, the songs, there's traditional songs, and gosh, there was hundreds and hundreds of thousands, maybe even a million songs, and a lot of them, there's many of them to uh, Soleil. Soleil can bring purification and protection and to remove negativity. Best time to call her is during the day, of course. And letting the sunlight in in your home. To opening up the curtains and the shades and allowing that sun to come in. Just to allow that sun just to hit hit your skin and everything in. To she cast away the shadows and the shades. Soleil. Now helps you. She's also good for helping you find things. Things that are lost. Instead of saying, St. Anthony, please, please come around. Something's lost and can't be found. You can probably associate it with Soleil. Please, Soleil, come around. Something's lost and can't be found. She's a goddess of fertility. The fertility of people. The fertility of animals. The fertility of nature. And by the way, it's polytheistic the Lithuanian deities and yes they can overlap on things there are many uh, different deities there like Velnas the is not Loki, but it's like a Loki kind of character. Perkunas, the god of thunder in Latvia, it's Perkins. Perkons, I should say Perkins. So you have Lima, the goddess of fate. So you have many different types of deities there. Now Soleil is of great benevolence to all her children and she is the, is the definition of life itself. You have uh, Calvis, which almost sounds like Calvin. That's the uh, temperature of heat. So one can, so He's the divine smith god, like I said before. Now, even though Soleil was married, or she has different consorts, it does not define her. She has her own sovereignty. She is sovereign unto herself. 
Being married never defined her. She is free. She is not, she does not just get her power from her husband. She is not defined by him. Now there are stories about, you know, the, the, the solar eclipse. When the moon covers the sun, it says that the sun, the sun is captured by the moon. And that it was the zodiac, signs of the zodiac. Or sometimes a hero that would come. And say, and she allowed herself to be saved by this hammer. And there was a, in stories in Lithuania that they, that they even showed the Christian, oh, the Christians, uh, what were they called? Missionaries, the, uh, the hammer that was used to free her. She is a powerful, she is powerful beyond measure. She is hardworking. She's a sing, she represents single, because she is a single mother. She's faithful and true. She is the queen of heaven. The light upon the earth. She without the sun. Uh -huh. Do I even have to explain it? And of course the moon is important. I mean if we didn't have the moon. Our earth would have been on a radical crazy wobble. Which we wouldn't have evolved. But the sun is our is the center of our solar system colors that can be used for her red yellow amber gold and sometimes even like i said she wears the silver shoes silver Soleil will shine her light equally on everyone. And remember, her power is her own. She is independent. She is independent. She is warmth. She's a goddess who deals with health. She's a goddess who deals with healing. For those who have experienced rape, especially by A relative or a family member of course please seek out medical help if you need it call call emergency services right away there are places for uh, there are there's a plate there's an organization called rain or AIN for those who have experienced it if you need to see a therapy please see it please go to one if you need to take medicine please take it if you need to seek out a group, then go ahead. But it's a very traumatic thing. So those who have experienced it, can call upon Soleil. Especially if your mother never did anything for you. If your mother was too afraid to do something, unaware that anything ever happened to you, or was complicit and allowed it to happen, which is very ugly. People like that man should be in prison, those who allowed it.
who was complicit, who definitely made sh didn't care if it happened, and rather stay with her man than protect her her, her child. So for those who have experienced this horrible act, can find a mother's love in Soleil, for she is a mother, and she's a protective mother, and she's a loving mother. She is a goddess that you can call upon in any situation that the light of truth will shine upon anything. She is the power of the conscious mind of, and she knows things that, things that were dark, things that are done in the darkness will come to the light of day. So remember that what's done in the shadows will be exposed in the light. And that's what you can ask her to do. Those who backstab you. Those who talk about you. Those who cheat on you. Those who commit crimes against you. You can ask Soleil. Show the light of truth. Upon this situation. For she is the great mighty goddess. She is a powerful, energy-filled goddess. It is said that during weddings, that she, if a, a child, if a, if a woman is to get married and she doesn't have her mother, that she acts like a surrogate mother. And it's the same thing with uh, the god of the moon menace that he acts like a surrogate father so I know there were stories suggesting that Oshrina Oshrine was uh, either raped or seduced by the moon god and that sort of like an, uh, an elderly person an el an el not an elderly but an older per person seducing a younger, a uh, naive or naive ch uh, person. My a lot of stories that I read suggest rape. So, but either way, those two are divorced. She she scars his face. So a lot of suggest suggestions that it was a forcible rape. Things that you can offer the sun. Definitely music and, and song, dance, flowers like daisies and sun, sunflowers are so sacred to her. Roses, honey, amber. Think of solar foods. Some will be traditional and non-traditional. Apples. Of course, gold, silver, diamonds, candlelight, bonfires. Think of sweet things too. You know, I know there was a festival and this is going back in the 90s that corn cakes were, were offered to her let's see when this was uh... not 90s I'm thinking early 2000s because I really didn't know who she was until around 2001. And I know there was, what was it, 2002 maybe. 
there were corn corn cakes and stuff and everything that was yellow and red was given to her. I'm just trying to remember when it was. It was in the 90s. Sorry. <laughs> Horses are also such sacred to her. Did I mention horses? I don't think I... Yeah, I did mention pulling her uh, chariot, but those are also associated to, with her. It is also said, especially during the uh, summer solstice, that it's people who greet the sun. And it's also good any day to greet the sun, especially... Uh, for the sunlight because it's very fortuitous and to, to get a, a little bit of her power within you, her energy, her blessings. So hers is a joyous occasion to laugh and dance and feast under the sun. Now, there are stories, okay, after she rides through the day, she takes her horses and she bathes them in the ocean. She washes her, her horses off. She does go into the land of the dead at uh, night. She also rests in her apple tree. So there's different versions of the story. There's other stories where supposedly once or, or she drowned or something and her she the earth goddess uh, asked her to be brought back. She does have ride a golden boat in the underworld. God, I'm already 47 minutes. I only feel like I was talking for 10 minutes. But she's a very approachable goddess, especially if you're a beginner and if you never worked with any of the gods or goddesses before she's very welcoming she's a pretty uh, peaceful goddess she Shine, like I said, she welcomes all. For the most part, I would say. But she shines her light on everyone. You know how they say Santa Muerte? I don't know if anyone's a simple worshiper, Santa Muerte, I am. That her arms are closed to no one, her arms are open to everyone. And I'm not saying, not comparing Sole to Santa Morte. That's not, I'm just trying to give you an analogy. So, they are, they are far. They are, they are so different. So, there is so much to learn about this goddess. And I do hope you learned a lot about her. And if you like my video, give me a thumbs up. If you did, you give me a thumbs down. But if you do, I really do enjoy those likes. Uh, they tell me I'm doing a good job. And if you really like this, please subscribe to my channel. I do love getting <laughs> to subscribers. It really tells me I'm doing a good job. Please share this video on different, uh, your Facebook, your other social media platforms. Share it with your friends and family. And I don't, do not have a Patreon account. And if you like my video and you have some money to donate, please considering donating some money to 
places that help single mothers and also organization that help runaway children and orphan children please you know give the money there because i don't have a patreon account nor do i have like a thing telling me to give me money or anything these videos are free for all and i'm not going to open a patreon account where oh i'll always show these videos to patreons and you'll get an extra video no these videos are for everyone so i do hope you enjoyed this video and i do want to thank all those who given me likes all those who given who made comments and all those all to all my subscribers and to my new viewers hail and welcome i thank you so much for watching this video and to my subscribers who and to those who are not subscribers but watch my videos thank you and as always blessed be